Okay, so I'm going to record for you today how to color a black and white photo using Photoshop. So um, the first thing you're going to do is we're going to open up our black and white photo in Photoshop. So um, we have two ways we can do this. You can either download an image that um, I provided for you in your learning management system, or you can uh, use a personal photo that you've scanned in. Um, you could also download a black and white image, but I would like it to be a vintage photo and also make sure that it is um, high resolution. Um, you can do that when you're doing a Google search, um, making sure that the image is just large. All right, so I have this um, vintage portrait that I'm going to use to show you um, how we're going to do this. So just like when we're creating any other sort of um, file in Photoshop, we're, the first thing that we're going to do is um, make sure that we duplicate our background. Uh, so I'm just making this a little bit larger for you guys. Okay, so um, there's a couple ways you can do this. We talked about this before. You can right click and go to duplicate layer. You can go up to your fly down menu. Um, you can drag it over top of the new menu or you can hold option and um, and drag the layer. Okay, so once we've got our um, duplicate there, we're going to rename our first one, original image or source um, image and we're going to make sure that that's locked by hitting that little padlock there and then also turning off the layer and then we're just going to work with this one and say black and white image okay once you've had those duplicate layers um, this for this we're going to actually be using the selection tool we're also going to be using something called adjustment layers Adjustment layers can be found in a couple different places. Um, one, you can go to where it says window and go to where it says adjustments. That's going to bring up a panel that's going to show all your adjustments. As you roll over each adjustment, it's actually going to um, tell you what those adjustments are. For this particular project, we're going to be working with solid color adjustments. So you can actually access that in your adjustment layers. Um, you can only access that at the bottom of your um, layers panel and there's a little bl circle that is half black and half white. I like to call this the black and white cookie. Okay, And that cookie is where you're going to find all of your adjustment layers and the first one being the solid color which is what we're going to be using. Okay, We're also going to be using our blending modes which is going to be how our layers interact with one another. And so um, when you create a, when you change the blending mode, it allows you to see the other layers beneath it. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to those selection tools that we learned about last week. Um, and we're going to be using those to kind of select the areas that we want to color. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Um, and I'm going to start by just selecting, actually I'm going to select her hat. So probably the easiest way to do that is using the quick selection tool um, and I'm just adding to the selection until I have everything kind of selected that I want um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail here um, because I can always change my selection later um, just remember if you want to add to your selection you're going to press the shift key and if you want to subtract from your selection um, you're going to hit that option or alt key and that's going to allow you to um, deselect. So I don't want to spend too much time on this selection because I don't want this video to be too long. Um, also remember that your quick selection tool is a brush based tool so that means you can make the brush bigger or smaller depending on what you're selecting. Um, once you've made your selection uh, you're going to um, I got too much of a selection here. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go into um, just like 
You actually did not learn this yet. Yes, you did. You're going to go into select and mask like we did last class. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to take you into this editing mode. Um, remember, we can change our view here. So I'm going to change this to overlay, which allows me to really see um, the curls in her hair. And I'm going to actually go to the paintbrush because... Um, and I'm going to want to actually paint out that selection of her hair. All right. So for this, um, whoops, I don't want that. So I'm just kind of going to take out part of this hat here. Um, notice that my edges are a little bit kind of uh, jagged. So, and I've actually got some selection over here that I do not want. So I'm going to subtract that as well. Um, hopefully there's not too much else. All right. So I can clean up my selection here. Um, and my edges are a little jagged. So what I can do is I'm going to go over here to this menu and I'm going to smooth out my edges a little bit. Okay, um, and I'm also going to feather them a little bit. This is going to help because what I'm doing is I'm going to be adding color to this image. And uh, it's okay if my edges are a little soft because then that means the colors will kind of blend. And because these photos are kind of old, um, it'll give it a more realistic quality. So once I have my selection the way I want it, I hit OK. All right, so now we've got our selection, and what we're going to do is we're going to go down to that black and white cookie, and we're going to choose solid color. This is an adjustment layer, okay? So what that means is that instead of just placing a color over top of um, the image, we're creating a whole other layer that's going to have the color that we want. So I'm going to choose whatever color I want. I'm going to hit OK. So right now this looks as though um, we kind of just took spray paint and painted over top of the image. Um, and we want it to look more realistic. We want all those shadows and those values that we had in the, in the photograph in there. Um, so what we need to do is we need to change the blending mode. So how we do that is up here on the layers panel, um, you'll see where it says normal. So we kind of messed around a little bit with blending modes in Illustrator but they're a lot more important when we're working in Photoshop. Um, you're going to go to, there's a little drop down and there's a couple of um, blending modes that are going to be a little bit better for um, this particular project. I'm going to have you watch another video on blending modes, um, but I also want you to just kind of like go through each one. You'll notice that as you go through, um, that color blue starts to interact with the image underneath differently. Okay, so some of the best ones for this particular project are going to be um, soft light is going to be a good one. Um, hard light could be good depending on the way that you want it to look. Overlay could also be good. Um, and then you have down here color, which is this is what it's meant for, is going to be the best. And one of the reasons that we use an adjustment layer for this instead of just coloring it is let's say I say, okay, well, her hat looks okay blue. Um, oh, also you could use uh, multiply is going to work as well. So let's say I like her hat blue, but then I realize that I want the background blue. And so I'd rather have her hat be a different color. Um, if you color it in just with a paintbrush or something like that, um, you're not going to have the opportunity to change it. So again, we talked about working destructively versus working non-destructively. And so in order to non -destruct, be non-destructive, um, when we create this adjustment layer, if we double click on this, it actually allows us to change the color to whatever we want. So here I can actually c color it purple. Um, I can move all the way up to pink or red. I might make it like a kind of a peachy color. And then I hit OK. Now let's say um, there's something else that I want to add that I want to be the same color. Okay, um, I wrote step-by-step -step directions for you on how to do this, but just in case you forget, I'm going to do this video too. So, all right. So what happens here is we've got our adjustment layer, and what you'll see is um, 
your adjustment layer is actually the entire layer is pink okay so if I turn that off and turn it on so what I've done here is I've turned off my mask and so if you've watched the other video which talks about creating masks um, what you understand is is that the part that you can see so the part of my image that is pink in the thumbnail is actually white okay and everything else is black so what that means is that black is hiding that color pink and white is revealing it so if I hide my actual image and I had my mask the entire image is going to be pink if I show my mask just the area that I had selected is going to be pink and you can see that it's white here and then when I reshow my picture, you can see how the blending mode allows that pink to interact with the photograph. So let's say um, there are parts of this image that maybe could be a little bit cleaner. Um, I could go into select and mask, but I can also go straight to my mask. So in the last video, I showed you the difference between selecting the layer thumbnail and the mask thumbnail. And so when we have the mask thumbnail selected, we can go ahead and say, okay, well, there's a little bit that I missed right here, and I'm going to make sure that my white is selected, and it would help. I want to actually have my brush selected. And then when I paint here, what that's going to do is it's going to add that color to anything that I paint with white. Okay? If there was an area that, um, I'm using funny paint brushes right now because I was working on another project. Um, let's choose soft round okay so if I was um, going up here okay and just in case you were curious I'm hitting the uh, space bar in order to get that hand to move my picture around so I'm gonna flip these just by hitting that little arrow there so black on top white in background um, you can also do that by hitting X on your keyboard but basically, if I start painting with black, what that's going to do is it's actually going to um, have my pink disappear, okay, because I'm hiding that pink, and so I can just paint with my black. So this allows it to be very, um, we can be very specific. Now let's say I wanted to add this flower and I wanted to make it the same color. I don't have to select this and add another adjustment layer. All I have to do is be on this adjustment layer and have the mask selected and I can go here and there's two things I can do. I can either um, paint with white so that that part um, shows up as pink, which could be a little tedious or um, I can also make another selection. So I can choose my click selection tool again um, and I can make sure that I'm actually have to, anytime I make a selection that I want to color, I have to be on that black and white image because that's the uh, layer that has the pixels. So I'm clicking here and you can see that my um, flower is selected and then I'm going to go back to my mask. So again, you have to make sure that you know what's selected. And what I'm going to do is I want this to be white. So if our mask, let's say our masks only exist in black and white. Um, what I would want to do is make sure that my black is in the foreground. And then I'm going to hit and I'm going to make sure that my mask is um, selected. And I have my part that I want to add to it selected. And I'm going to hit delete. And that's going to add everything that I had selected to that particular mask, which means it's going to be that color. Okay. Now I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select um, her bathing suit. I'm going to use the magnetic lasso for this. Um, I'm going to start here and I'm going to go around. It might take me a couple minutes. But, and again, I'm not going to do a great job um, because I could be very particular and stay here for a long time. All right, so I'm only going to select the top part of her bathing suit. Okay, so I could um, create an adjustment layer straight from here, 
or if I want I can go into select and mask and refine so you can see that there's some edges here that I could refine I'm not going to do that right now but um, I do expect you guys to be particular about how um, close your mask is to your selections you're going to hit OK and then you're going to go down to that adjustment layer which is that black and white cookie and you're going to choose solid color this is going to add in another layer and I say OK I want my bathing suit to be bright blue and I hit OK and again the next step is that you're going to go to where it says normal and you're going to change that blending mode so I'm going to go to overlay and try that that looks awesome so um, maybe I want to change the color of this hat again so I'm going to go here and I'm going to say you know what I actually want this hat to be kind of maybe like a the yellow looks nice actually um, but maybe I want it to be like a mustard yellow All right so this allows me to have a lot of control over what color I choose and again I can mess around with uh, the blending modes and get it to look exactly the way I want it to okay so this gives you a lot of versatility it's a little too much um, with what everything looks like now again basically what you're going to do is you're going to have lots of layers for all different colors so every time you have a new color you're going to create a new layer now if I want to add to that blue because this bathing suit is blue down here um, all I need to do is um, make sure that I have that black and white layer selected and make my selection I go to this mask here I make sure that my black is on top and then I'm just going to hit delete and that's going to add that to um, to that particular mask and I'm going to do that again here with this bottom one make sure that I'm on my mask make sure that that's in front and I'm going to hit delete okay and then I deselect because you don't remember if you're if things aren't working um, you need to deselect. Now, I don't expect you guys to um, necessarily use realistic colors, but I do expect the entire image to be colored in. So um, you're just going to kind of repeat that process. And the reason that I want you to do the whole image is because um, the more often you do that process and working with adjustment layers and um, blending modes, the more you'll understand it and get it. Okay, so I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, remember to email me, and I will see you on Thursday.